anytime I do a video on a subsonic round, this is a 338 Spectre. Here we have an 8.6 blackout. Every time I do a video on these, the number one question is why? Sometimes you get a little bit more information about their curiosity of these calibers, but oftentimes it's just three letters, why? That's it. They don't really give me much else to go on. So I'm going to answer that question for you, and I'm going to tell you why. There are several reasons why. So in case you missed it, Hornady, about a week ago, introduced the 338 ARC. For conversational purposes, it looks a whole lot like this, the 338 Spectre, to which I do have a gun that shoots it. Uh, I've been out to 200 yards, 217 yards. Uh, we'll take it a little bit further, but that's not really what this thing's designed to do. Not a long-range cartridge. Directly in the crosshairs of this launch from Hornady is our beloved 8.6 Blackout. Hornady did not mess around. They got right to the point and they put out three or four main reasons why their 338 arc was better than the 8.6 Blackout. First one on the list, case capacity. Second one on the list, the AR-15 platform is better than the AR-10 platform. Third on the list, they're saying their 1 and 8 twist is better than the 8.6's 1 and 3 twist. And the fourth thing that they pointed out was their ability to go from subs to supers without messing with a gas block due to the pressures of that smaller case. I have covered all four of those points extensively. There are pros and cons down the list of them. The really interesting part about this was we didn't have to wait very long to get a response from Q. Now, Q is the inventor of the 8.6 Blackout that we see right here, and uh, he didn't mess around either with his reply back at Hornady. Now, Q claims that he is a fan of Hornady, he's friends with them, but in watching this video, it was pretty clear uh, that he was a little bit upset that the arc was aimed directly at the 8.6. Given that the 8.6 was his baby, I can't help but uh, put myself in his shoes. I probably would have been a little bit upset as well. Three things from the Q video that he shoots back at Hornady about the 338 arc. Number one, uh, the barrel swap. Now, Hornady claims that we're talking about a barrel swap to get from an AR-15 to... Uh, the 338 arc it's not entirely true but i get their point technically it's just a barrel swap uh you do need the bolt for this that will work it's a type 2 grindle uh, you need the barrel you're probably going to have to do a gas block that is adjustable uh, these are all pretty normal things for us subsonic hunters and the magazine uh there is a good point about the magazine the arc will have greater taper than the specter uh, you can't really tell on here. The Spectre has a slight taper to it. The Arc has a little bit more taper to it, but we're not talking about like 7.62 by 39. We're not talking about, you know, 7.62 by 39 level taper. Other than swapping that magazine, they think you need a full circle magazine. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm building one. We'll talk about it when it gets here. So back to the original question, why? Subsonic hunting is all the rage right now, but... And I have been swept up in that. But uh, it's not the only way to hunt, and it's not necessarily a new fad. People have been subsonic hunting for a long time. There's all sorts of subsonic calibers out there, uh, notably the 300 Blackout. To not specifically talk about a caliber just in general, subsonic hunting is good for a lot of ways. Most of the hunting that most of us do is inside of 200 yards anyway, and that's a great range for subsonic shooting. If you're stalking a pig or a deer, having to go headphones on, off, on, off, and then whether or not you have them on whenever you need to shoot or not is a whole nother thing. When you're subsonic hunting, you don't need hearing protection. Uh, these rounds are very quiet. I've seen some really quiet 300 blackouts. Uh, my Spectre is very quiet. My 8.6s are very quiet, especially the bolt guns. We're going to keep talking about subsonic ammo, but we've got to talk about our video sponsor first. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. This year has seen a record number of high profile data breaches, raising serious concerns about personal information and security. 
Security is a big deal to me. I'm sure it's a big deal to you. AT&T, Dell, all of them, Ticketmaster, they have had massive breaches compromising millions and millions of customers. Aura also offers a variety of other features to keep your information safe uh, from those data breaches, things like a VPN for secure browsing, the data broker opt-out, which stops companies from selling your personal information in the first place. That's where those spam calls come from. A password manager helps you create strong passwords and keeps them secure. For a long time, I used Google to secure my passwords. Then I realized that uh, Google themselves were a major source of my problems. So about six months ago, I stopped my family from being vulnerable, and there is a free trial, Aura.com slash EagleRun23, and you get two weeks of this for free. Sign up for the two weeks. You'll find that that helps you out a lot just right there. Enough time for Aura to find any of your personal data before it's exposed. Thanks again, Aura. Let's get back to the video. So just a couple of reasons right there why it's cool. The other reason as to why are we shoving a giant bullet in this case in the first place is because of a simple math problem. Velocity and weight and energy. We need the energy to take down the animal. We can't do it with velocity because we have a speed limit. And so the only other equation we can play with here is the weight. You're talking about a 55 grain bullet for the AR-15 that's a 5.56 gun. You're going up to like 168 or 180 grain bullet for your 308. Your Creed Moors, uh, your 270, those are in the range of like 120, 140. So we need this big heavy bullet in order to make up uh, where we're short on our equation. So that's where we end up with these giant bullets. That is just the projectile out of an 8.6 blackout. So that is shoved down in the case. Uh, the case is actually shorter than the round and it takes up some of that case capacity in the first place and also gives us a really big bullet. Now 350 for the most part is as big as we go. Obviously going bigger would be more expensive and we're trying to keep the cost down on these rounds. But a lot of guys like the 300s, the 350s, uh, that's where we hang out with 8.6 Blackout. So getting those big bullets, it does make for a funky look, but I think that this is, uh, this is an endearing size cartridge with a big bullet and a small case. So those are the best two answers right there. One, the enjoyability of shooting and being around people who are shooting subsonic. And the other reason why that we are stuffing a big bullet in there is so that we can uh, take advantage of the weight of the bullet since we don't have the velocity. I mentioned several other videos on my channel that are available. I'll link some of those below, uh, but YouTube thinks that you'll like this video right here. If you're curious about these calibers, any of the builds that have gone along with them, uh, I appreciate you subbing and checking out some of the other videos on the channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.